Welcome to Transition Tuesdays for this Tuesday, May the 2nd, 2023. I am your host, Russ Williams. I'm so glad you could be here today, ladies and gentlemen. I know you could have been anywhere in this world today. I know you could have been anywhere in this world today, but you decided to be here with me. And I appreciate that. And more importantly, I appreciate you. So welcome to Transition Tuesdays, my good friends out there. We have a power pack show once again, my friends. But before I start the show, I always like to state my intentions. And my intention is to give you the opportunity to laugh, smile, think, and engage in honest conversations about your life's transitions. So that's what we talk about here on Transition Tuesdays. So welcome, everybody. You have made it to your safe place, to your fun place, I'm hoping, here on Transition Tuesdays. So let's get after it, guys. And, uh, you know, people can be coming in, and I'll be shouting you out as well when you do come in. But I want to talk about a couple of things we're doing transition to. Um, hot off the press, the second round of the NBA playoffs, the second round. So in the East, you have the Philadelphia 76ers versus the Boston Celtics. The Sixers lead one game to none by the heroics of James Harden, the beard. This guy, man, he, he, he turned back the hands of time. This guy went for... 40 plus, like was it 45 or 42 or something like that? This guy was going off. And shout out to Shaq who predicted it. Shaq said that Harding had to get 35 plus. And he got that. Along with the other coach, the characters, Maxi played well, Tobias Harris played well. But James Harden, man, turned back the hands of time and turned back the clock. Man, he was the James Harden of old. I was totally surprised. I didn't think he can do it again. I didn't think he had it in him personally. Here's a guy who led the NBA in assists, but he really stepped up with no Embiid, with no Embiid there as well. And speaking of Embiid, I'm sure he's going about to get the MVP that's coming up in a matter of minutes. Actually, if that comes up, I'll tell you guys about it. But um, you know, but no Embiid, and the Sixers went on to get that first game versus the Boston Celtics. See, like the Boston Celtics, they got to learn their lesson from what happened with the Atlanta Hawks. Man, they can't play around, man. You know, but the 76ers, kudos to them, man, winning that game. And like I was talking to my guy, Chris, I hope he comes on here, Uncle Smoothie. Like I was calling and I was telling him, listen, man, just keep the game close. Just keep hanging around, hanging around. Stuff gets tight and you can get the win. And that's exactly what happened to them. That's what happened to them. We got Miss Deborah on the check-in. Blessings to you as well, Deborah. Thank you for joining us here on Transition Tuesdays. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you coming on. And thank you for the many blessings that you bestow on the last episode, a couple of episodes beforehand. We appreciate you, Miss Deborah. And hopefully your, your son George is playing well and doing well as well as well there too. <laughs> as I said, if that makes any sense. But uh, yeah, you know, let's, let's hope that as well. So now we welcome you here to Transition Tuesdays. So... You know, still in the East, we talk about the Sixers again. And so if I'm the 76ers, I do not play and be the second game. He didn't play the first game. I definitely sit him out so he can get more rest and play in game three. And that way he can get his MVP trophy at home. Okay, that's going to rival up the troops and stuff like that too. And, you know, they, they got the split. That's what they wanted to get was a split. So they got the split. And... um you know, so that they accomplish, well, they will accomplish that because I think they'll lose the next game to the Celtics. So we'll see. But this series is going to go, I think, six or seven games, most likely. And um, we're going to see who the best team is going to win. I know if it was up to my guy, Uncle Smoothie, <laughs> he would probably say that they're going to win as well. Let me see. <laughs> yeah, man. So we shall see. We shall see. Now, also in the East. You got my New York Knicks versus the Miami Heat. And the Heat lead the series one game to nothing. In which the Heat, <coughs> excuse me, the Heat came in. MSG got the win. They got the win by the heroic efforts of Jimmy Butler. And Randall didn't play the first game. So the Knicks lost that game. But we got game two which is tonight at MSG. And I'm looking at TV. They said that Jimmy Butler, he was doubtful, but he's not playing in this game. Probably doing the same thing that 
that they're going to do with um, and be the 76ers, you know, sit him out this game. Because I heard his ankle is the size of a, uh, man, his ankle is the size of a baseball, they said, which is absolutely crazy. So he is missing the game tonight. Now I heard he, these people are doubtful for the game. Randall's doubtful. He's questionable for the game. I'm sure he's going to play tonight. Brunson is questionable for the game too. I'm sure he's going to lace them up tonight because we all know, or you should know, this is a must game for the Knicks. We have to get this game. I think this series is going seven personally, but we have to get this game. We have to get this game. We got my guy Darrell from New York Life on the check-in. What's going on, Darrell? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays, my friend. And Darrell says, hey, Russ, I hope you. I hope the Knicks win tonight. I hope so, too. Darrell, I hope they do win. Uh, it's going to be a good chance. They got to win this game. This is a must game. The Knicks cannot go down 0-2 in this series without a Jimmy Butler plan. That can't happen. That cannot happen. So that's not going to happen tonight. That's just my pick on it. I don't think they're gonna I don't think they're gonna lose tonight. We also got Felicia checking in from The Rock joining us. What's going on, Felicia? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So yeah, the Knicks must win. Again, Butler's out tonight. The other guys are questionable. We gotta lay some up, Knicks. We gotta win this game. We this is a must game. Like I heard somebody say, this is a musty. This is a must game. We have to get this game. The place is going to be rocking and rolling like it was the first game. It's going to be rocking. It's probably a tough ticket to get tonight too. So we have to win this game. If there's no Jimmy Butler, there is no excuse. I don't care. We got to get it done so it could go 1-1. And again, I think this series is going 7. And I think because the Knicks have home court advantage, I think they will prevail in this series. So let's go to the West. In the West, you have the Phoenix Suns. Against the Denver Nuggets. Now the Nuggets lead the series two game to none. Two games to none. And I tell you, man, people are sleeping on the Nuggets. The Nuggets are a very good team. Now here on the East Coast, I didn't get a chance to watch the Nuggets throughout this whole year. But you know the joke is good. But man, they got a strong bench, man. They can go 10, 11 deep easily. And they show it, man. They just wear you down. They have a very good team. And the Suns are down two zip. And um, but this series is not over. This series is not over. Because I think the Suns can revamp and, and regroup and tie this series 2-2. But they gotta start with game three, obviously. And I think I'm not sure, but did Chris Paul get hurt as well? So they kind of reel in there. But I mean, when you got a, a Booker and when you got a KD. Oh, man, you, you know, you, you won't get swept. And, I, you know, their fortunes will improve once they go to the Phoenix. Um, so they should tie that series up. I'm thinking, I would be really shocked if they lose this next game. They got to win this third game, which is a pivotal game. They got to win that one. So we shall see. But now we sleeping on the Nuggets. The Nuggets are a very good team. Man, you got the, Yo the Joker. He might get MVP for the third, third year in a row. I don't think that's going to happen this year. But again, that guy's immensely talented. That team is great. Man, I tell you, man, the, the Nuggets, you cannot sleep on that team. They have the number one seed for a reason. They have the number one seed for a reason. The next, tonight, you got the Golden State Warriors against the L.A. Lakers. Tonight, game one is tonight. Curry versus the King. You all know they are pumping this up. Man, from the exploits that... Curry had in game seven, round one, um, against the Kings. He scored 50 points. He put up a 50 burger. What can he do for an encore? They're home too. They got home court advantage as well against the King. LeBron James, defying the odds, reversing it twice in games, man. This guy, man, oh, I don't know how this guy does it, but he does it. He does it well, man. So it's going to be a great series. I'm sure. The guys, the NBA guys have said, wow, man, this, the NBA final, I mean, the NBA playoffs have been great, but this is a great one, too. And this isn't even the finals. So, again, this should be a Nick and Tuck series. But, again, I will stress this, and it looks like that Embiid, he did get MVP. He is the MVP, I think. They just shy him on the screen right now, but I'm assuming he's the MVP. He wouldn't be on the screen, right? <laughs> so, 
um, and B get MVP. But I think in this Lakers Warriors series, the key is going to be Anthony Davis. If Anthony Davis shows up and plays well, if he shows that he's the best player on the court, they should win no problem. But if he gives you mediocre efforts, you know, you hope the kid doesn't get hurt, you know, then they'll lose that series easily too. So the Lakers go as Anthony Davis goes. Not LeBron James, Anthony Davis. He is the key in all of the success with the Lakers. However he goes, they go. <laughs> as Felicia said, let's go New York, New York Knicks. Yes. Thank you, Felicia. Yes. We need the game tonight. We need the game tonight. I know you won't be watching, so I'll be able to tell you about the game. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so this series, the Lakers, you know, the Lakers should be, Lakers Warriors should be a great series, great for the NBA. You know, all these teams that are left, you know, these eight teams. And you know what's, you know what's kind of crazy, which probably never happened before? So you got, the seeding is like, you got the first team, you know, still in the seedings, is one through eight from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These these seeds are remaining in this in this draw. These last eight teams. It's amazing. I don't think that's never been done before. Never been done before. Meaning how the um, the Nuggets are the first place team, the first seed, and the Heat is the eighth seed. All these seeds one through eight are still alive. The fours and the fives and the sevens and the eights and the ones and twos and the threes. Man, that's amazing. I don't think that's never been done before. So that's cool. So it's been a great playoff. Uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun to see. Uh, you know, I'm glad that MB got MVP. Uh, I think he really deserved it. And my guy, I guess my guy Chris isn't my bad Smooth. Uncle Smooth's not on there. He might be at the press conference knowing Chris, you know, with his Philly ties that he has. You know, but Embiid, I think, is well deserved that he got MVP. Um, you know, you could have made a, <laughs> but you could have made an argument for the Joker for his third one. Actually, he played he played better this year than he did last year. So I don't know if you can give it three times in a row. I don't know. Maybe that's a rule, unwritten rule or unspoken rule. I don't know. But Embiid is the MVP. So man, these playoffs have been great. Uh, we got great games tonight. Uh, again, we got the Knicks Heat tonight, followed by the Warriors Lakers. So we got great games. We're going to continue to watch. Man, it has just been a loads of fun. Loads of fun just watching these games, just watching these games unfold. Yep. So here's what I want to do. I want to transition to something to all my fashionistas out there. Okay? I can't say I'm a fashionista. I'm not really. I'm not at all. But, you know, I like to, I like to dress when I can, dress to impress, you know. And, uh, oh, Darrell says, I thought Joker would win MVP. Yeah, I mean, you know, Darrell, I don't know if you can give it to him three years in a row, man. I think that might be an unspoken deal. I don't know if anybody, has anybody ever got it three years in a row? I don't think so. Two, definitely. A lot of times people got it two years in a row. But three, I don't know. Maybe that's, uh, maybe that might be an NBA conspiracy there. But, you know, he was well deserving of it. And like I said, he had a better year statistically last year. Than he did this year. So, you know, we'll see what goes on. Uh, <laughs> Felicia says, I don't need to watch the game. I have a Hall of Fame that will give me the highlights. I love the shirt. Looking like you're ready for summer fun. <laughs> Appreciate that, Felicia. And speaking of the look, the shirt, let's talk about the Met Gala that just took place for all you fashionistas out there. So I'm calling out all you fashionistas out there. The Met Gala just took place. So let me just talk about the highlights and I'm going to show you some of the um, the best looks. I'm going to give you, I have them down, the best looks at the gala. So this year's gala focused on um, the career of Carl, Carl Langerfield, the powerhouse and author and controversial designer who transformed some of the fashion's most famous houses. Um, Carl became synonymous with Chanel, the Chanel brand. So this year's Met Gala theme was Carl Langerfield, a line of beauty. So that was the theme um, for this year's Met Gala. And before I call, talk about the Met Gala a little bit, um, oh, and Darrell says, oh, oh 
Uh, one, I didn't realize he won two in a row. Yes, he did win two in a row. The Joker did win two in a row. But the streak ends there because Embiid is the, is the, uh, <laughs> is the MVP this year. Yep, that's how that go. That's how that game goes around NBA. No joke. No monopolies here, I guess. No three in a row for nobody, <laughs> including Jordan. <laughs> but let's go back to the Met Life. Met Life. The Met Gala. Okay. So the theme was a line of beauty. So here's what I wanted to show you guys because I want to because I took some you know took some pictures of it and I wanted to show you some people who was on here. So before I do that, anybody else? Oh, <laughs> Deborah says a lot of cats. Uh, for the Met Gala, you, you're right there, Deborah. And speaking of cats, I want to go over one. Doja Cat. And this is what Doja Cat had on. Doja Cat was dressed like a cat, right? She was there. This is the first time at the Met Gala. Uh, the Met Gala. Uh, she arrived in a full cat prosthetics in a De La Rental dress. Oscar De La Renta dress. Okay, I'll also give shout outs. To the name, to the name brands as well with some people. All right, you got Bad Bunny. He was there rocking a cream suit. By who? Let's see who he was. Yep, cream suit. This is Bad Bunny, who is an international entertainer. The guy who has um, get this closer for you guys to see. The guy who, I mean, is breaking records in terms of streaming. I think he's the most streamed guy in the world right now. Then you get, oh my God, then you get Cardi B. Cardi B. Uh, Cardi B is one of my favorite, personally. I can't wait till her album comes out. She wore a um, La Langerfield, uh, looks like a torset, gloves and a tie. This is Cardi B at the Met Gala. Cardi B, rocking that tie. Making it happen. Also, you had Kylie Jenner. She had Marc Jacobs on, Kim Kardashian, and a Scuffinelli, I think it is, and Kylie Jenner, and um, and a Howler Ackerman. They were there at the Met Gala. Look at this, see this? Anybody who summarized at the Met Gala. And before I continue, like, what, what's the purpose of the Met Gala? Is it is it an actual, um, is it an actual, like, runway? Like, do these people... Get dressed up? Are they part? Do they participate in? The, is it a runway event, or do they just go and sit there? And, and, and is it a fashion show that's going on, or is it a party? Is food or drink served there? Well, like what happens? What exactly goes on in this Met Gala? Do they raise money? I don't know. I'm just just asking. Just asking. Now, let me give you one look. This guy named Pedro Pascal. He's called the Internet Daddy, right? He's called the Internet Daddy. I want to let you know he's rocking something from Valentino. Now, I like this style personally. I guess this is what I would rock. All right, you guys see what he has on? Look at this. I'll just zone out a little bit, okay? Looks like he got like a jacket, shorts, shoes, <laughs> and a tie. That that looks like my alley at, at the Met Gala. I think I would rock something like that personally. That's just me. You got Rihanna. She's fresh off the Super Bowl, you know, performance, you know. Baby two on the way coming up. She was at the Met Gala in all her splendor. Okay. Who else we got here? Let me pull some more people. Oh, okay. Let me pull this guy and this gal. You got Young Miami and Diddy. Did they break up? But not here that night. Here's what they had on. If you're into fashion... All you fashionistas out there, what do y'all think of these all these all these different clothes? This line of beauty that this was called. What do y'all think about that? <laughs> As Darrell says, very elegant it seems. Yes. <laughs> Deborah says meowing. I guess with Doja Cat right there, Deborah. You know, so man, let's see who else we got here. Who else I put it? And I also got them in black and white. I want to give you that nostalgic type of feel, you know? Here you have Lizzo. Lizzo is in the house. I like Lizzo. I like her music. I like the. I like she, how she's an individual through and through. She's authentically herself, and she's in that in this type of dress by Chanel, a Chanel silhouette. Okay, if you know what that is, I have no idea what that is, but that's what she had on. Now, I'm about to show you this model named Austin Mason. 
He has this Chanel bride dress on. All right? Tell me what y'all think of this. This is um, a model, Austin Mason, with the Chanel dress. Chanel bride dress. What do y'all think? This is at the Met Gala. A line of beauty. What do y'all think about that? <laughs> I guess it's trying to go extreme, you know, do things like that. Hey, and he definitely did that. Now you got a person who is usually on the call. She's usually there like every year. So she's a she's a veteran. Jennifer Lopez rocking Ralph Lauren. Jennifer Lopez with like vintage, vintage, a vintage dress. Yes. Who else we got? Get a couple more. Now, let me give you this one here. Now, this person here, um, he wore pearls, gems, and a silver body paint suit. This is Little Nas X, who has always, he, he leaves you, he wants to keep it provocative, keep you guessing. I don't know what the theme was. Maybe he didn't get the, uh, you know, he didn't get the notes on that. <laughs> I don't know, but he just came as he is, authentically as he is. Nothing wrong with that, young man. <laughs> as Darrell says, Lizzo and J-Lo, fire. Yes, absolutely. Yep, they look good. Next, you got, ooh, here's one. You got Serena Williams and her husband. And Serena Williams is pregnant. She's going to be having a second baby. She announced it. They're on the red carpet. She's going to be having a second baby. Man, retirement must be good, man. Wow. Second baby on the way. Man, let me show you this one real quick. This guy's one of my favorite actors now. Young guy. Man, he does great work, man. Brian Tyree Henry. He's rocking this number here. Um, I don't know who is the uh, designer of it, but I like it. I'm, You know, this was something. i tell you what. Out of all these selections that you've seen so far, this would be something I would probably rock. I guess I would wear this. You know, if I had to wear it for a day, I think I could roll with this. I could roll with that. I like that. I like the good taste of that. I like the good taste of that. And speaking of taste, and they're probably going to be at this game tonight. Okay? You got Dwayne Wayne and Gabrielle Union. Here's this little number that they rocked. They rocked this here. And who did this? Um, Prada. Prada did this. Prada wear. Prada. By these two kings in this place, king and queen here. Okay, they'll probably be at the Nick game tonight. Cheering on the Miami Heat like they did last the other night. Okay? But the Knicks got this Kelvin. Now, let me give you another one here. Rapper Ice Spice. She's new on the scene, her first gala. She was there soaking it in, doing her thing. She was there as well. Okay. Showing that line of beauty, which was the theme here, line of beauty. Then the last one I have is Lala Anthony, okay, who co-hosted the Vogue live stream. Look and see what she has on. Fairly elegant. Man, it seems like it's a flashback what Lala has to like the 60s. You know, I could see like Lena Horne or somebody like that. Or Lola Falana as, as a man who... As uh, Red Fox used to talk about Lola Falana all the time, you know, I could just see her wearing one of these numbers. Very elegant, very classy. That was La La Anthony. So I asked you guys the question, okay? If you were invited to the Met Gala, let's say you were invited to the Met Gala, you know, you had a ticket, right? What would you wear? What would you wear? Okay, what would you wear at the Met Gala? Now, I will go first on this. You know what I would wear at the Met Gala? I would wear this shirt here. You like this shirt? I could rock this shirt here. I probably wear, here's what I would rock. I give a little, I don't know, I'll, I'll get a little flair. I would wear, you know how people wear the spandex, the tights? I would have one leg long and the other leg short. All right, kind of similar to like how Angel Reese did with LSU. I probably rock that a little bit, right? I probably have some high socks always up to my knees, right? I probably rock uh, maybe some kicks, 
you know, maybe some Nikes, I don't know, some Jordans, I don't know, something like that, I don't know, maybe a nice boot. I would rock a house coat or a robe. And you know what I saw with, like, for shock value? And again, I'll get away from the theme, so if the theme is the line of beauty, I'll get totally far-fetched with it because I'm at the Met Gala. I would have on one of those astronaut hats. Why an astronaut hat? I have no idea, but that's what I would rock. But what would y'all rock? What would y'all wear? What would y'all wear? <laughs> Deborah says she would wear a cow a cowgirl outfit. There you go, Deborah. I like that. I got you. Now, would you come in with a horse? Because again, they might give you the leeway to leeway to come in with a horse. Would you rock a horse? Would you have a horse with that as well? <laughs> Felicia says, um, um, nobody had on my favorite a blazer. Oh, okay. So Felicia, you would have on a blazer, right? What color blazer would you have? Would it have to be black blazer? What kind of blazer would you have? And Felicia says, life has been so busy, I haven't even had the television on on to follow the Met Gala because hashtag entrepreneur. I know, and I know you go extremely hard too, Felicia. I know that too. But again, I just gave you a little, a little insight on the gala and what it was. And again, I guess they raise money for that because they do it every year. I think it's the first... I think it's the first um, first week in May they do the Met Gala, I think, every year. So, um, you know, am I, is it part of Fashion Week? I don't know. But do they raise money for this event? You know, I'm not really sure. Not really sure. My man Darrell says, I wear a nice Ralph Lauren or Kenneth Cole accessories. See, see, Darrell is dapper like that. I, I can see that, Darrell. I can see you rocking that. I can definitely see you rocking that with probably a New York Life cufflinks. Would you rock that too, Darrell? I can see that too. <laughs> We got my guy, Michael, on the check-in from North Carolina. What's going on, Mike? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays, my friend. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Nah, but I, I like I like what everybody's saying. Felicia says she would wear a blazer with wide leg trouser pants, dark sunglasses, white cotton shirt, and pointed toe shoes. Ooh, my God. That sounds good, Felicia. Now, Felicia, will the shoes be red bottoms? So what I'm going to ask, would they be red bottom shoes to match it all? Would you do that for us? Could you do that for us? <laughs> Man, that is good. You guys give us some good, give us some good suggestions. I love it. I absolutely love it. So ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, if we, able, if we were able to make you laugh, smile, and think during this broadcast, my good friends, you have accomplished something major today. So celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory victory. Alright, let me just get my theme music going here. Hold on a second. Here we go. Oh yeah. Here we go. Yes. Alrighty. Man. Hey guys, I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for you watching Transition Tuesdays. Each and every Tuesdays. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As Felicia says, the shoes must be comfortable. That's right. Red bottoms are comfortable too, Felicia. Don't forget that. Red bottoms. You look good in them. You got to rock them. All right? <laughs> hey, so guys, ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, if you uh, miss this show or our past shows, you can always go to our YouTube channel called Transition Tuesdays, okay? You can like and subscribe there. Please make sure you do that. You can also follow me on Instagram at Russ Will Transitions. That's Russ Will Transitions with an S. You follow me, I will definitely follow you back. So make sure you do that. And also, I want to give a shout out to you guys, the Transition Army, for joining us today. If I didn't give you guys a shout out or applause, I'm doing it right now. Because you guys take the time out of your busy schedule to join me each and every Tuesdays. I appreciate you guys. And I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. So I thank you guys immensely. Let's get back to the theme. Here we go again. All right. <laughs> so I want to get a shout out to our corporate sponsor, Sweet Candy Cafe, which is the home of Southern Sweetness in downtown Lumberton, North Carolina. So the show is about to end. So when the show ends, I need everybody to go to sweetcandycafe.com to order your confectionery goodies. Your taste buds will thank you. So make sure you do that, okay, guys? Make sure you do that. 
Any last one to say? Deborah said, we appreciate you. I appreciate you too, Deborah. Thank you for tuning in. And also, Felicia's talking about, make sure you go to sweetcandycafe.com. Make sure you go there. So, Transition Army, as we say in parting, happy transitioning, and we'll speak to you soon. Take care, everybody. God bless. Ha, ha, ha.